guys. Hello. Hello, guys. Y'all come on in. Come on in. Good evening. Hello. Hello. If this is your first time here on my channel, my name is Cheryl Grabowski, and I am a mukbanger with a variety show. So my channel is all about good food, good conversations. We mukbang. We do a lot of stuff over here. We have strong conversations. I talk on narcissists. I am a survivor of narcissistic abuse. And this is a reaction to Jasmine's Ways video. So, hey, Jasmine, girl, come through, come through. <laughs> Listen, I uh, I saw your video. I listened to your video. You listened to my video well, and I am uh, excited about that. You did a good job. I read the comment section. You, you referenced the comment section. It was one... One particular lady who made a comment and um, what was the comment? What was it? I'll think of it in a minute, but just let me get on. Y'all, that's my smoke detector. Please don't get on me about that smoke detector. I was supposed to get a battery. I didn't get it. And so let's let's talk. Just try to ignore it. Um. Jasmine, you first of all, uh, I'm not offended that you did the video. You did a, a great job covering it. Um, you, I could tell you were sincere and you kind of understood where I was coming from. You didn't take sides between me and my sister. It's, and it's not about taking sides, really. It's, it's just, it's my life. You know what I mean? And I wanted to share it with YouTube, the content creators, the subs, you know, my clients that are watching the channel um, and just anybody who knows me because y'all know that this YouTube channel is important to me. Um, me sharing my life, my commentary, my perspective is super important as I meet the different ones that are here in the sector. I've learned so much since I've been in the sector and I've met, not met, but I, you know, I pay attention to people's uh, content and um, some interesting people here in the sector. So, I did the video about me and my sister. I think this is the second or third time that I've um, spoken about my sister. So, in the comment section, um, there's a good mix of different ones saying, oh, well, you know, they chose not to go to funerals. There was one lady said that she hadn't gone to, to a funeral in a long, long time. I think that was LCA or just the L, the letter L. Um, Sunday Rose, I was there for your comments. So Jasmine, it's fine that you covered the video. You did a wonderful job and I wasn't, I wasn't throwing my sister under the bus at all. I could throw my sister under the bus. I absolutely could do that. Um, but that's not my intention because I'm not here to expose anybody that's not what my channel is about my channel is about me it's about how i see things how i've experienced things and what i think about it it's about helping people to understand <clears throat> narcissistic abuse y'all excuse me for that that piercing sound in the background i really need my son to change the battery but I want to talk a little bit tonight, Jasmine, and you can react to this if you want to. I've been studying it for a while. Me and my coach, we've, I think I've mentioned it to her here and there a little bit. This is not something entirely that we covered while I was in her program. I've talked about it a little bit on my channel, Jasmine, and it's about, I tell you guys, like, I've been attracting narcissists all my life. I come from a narcissistic home i've dealt with narcissistic abuse not just in relationships but from my very first family that i was ever in it was a very toxic environment um i love my mother very much everybody knows that okay first of all i love my daddy he wasn't my biological dad he was the dad that took care of me and my siblings and there were six of us and he wasn't, you know, he wasn't at least three of us. We don't belong to him biologically, you know, 
could be more, I don't know. But I grew up in a toxic environment. We had lots of struggles. Jasmine, you hit on one particular thing. You says you said that I value um, my life experience and my story and I'm open with my past. I have siblings, in particular my sister. And you said too that she probably was, she's embarrassed about our history. And um, I think maybe that she is. Me and mama had a conversation. I have a video here y'all on YouTube that I uploaded, right? And I've never done this before. You know how you hit one video to be uploaded, but I must've did a double tap. There was a video inside of my camera where I was thinking about starting a new channel and really talking about the details of my childhood, one incident at a time as I experienced it. So on that particular video, it ended up here on my YouTube channel and it's here now. When I realized that it was up there because people started commenting and I went on my phone and I looked and I said, what are they talking about? I didn't know what was going on because that wasn't my intention to upload that video. It was right behind another short video that I did about my childhood. Um, and so once I saw it, because the comments made me go and say, let me check my last upload because I know I didn't make a mistake and, and do a double tap, but I did. And the video was there. So I called my mama. And I said, Mama, I I made a mistake and I uploaded a video. And she said, well, what is, what is, why are you calling me? What is it about? I said, it's about our childhood. She said, well, what did you say? I said, no, nothing much. <laughs> I just talked about when we lived downtown Raleigh uh, on a street called Swain Street. It was right off of Jones Street. And... So that was me and my all my siblings, except for one. The baby boy hadn't been born yet. He would be born, I believe, to the next house that we moved in. And um, and I talked about that. And she said, well, what did you say? I said, well, I just talked about, you know, y'all playing cards and us playing at night outside and taking bike rides. And, you know, me trying to smoke cigarettes when I was... <laughs> When I was a little girl, I talked about the time. I think I talked about the time. Um, Y'all, that thing is terrible. When, you know, my hair caught on fire and, you know, and I went to school and, you know, I didn't have any hair on my head. We, I had to wear a scarf and there was this one little white girl in class and she was the reject of the whole class. But I actually ended up at the same table with her because she was snotty nose and, and always crying and obviously had issues and she was strange. And so I ended up at the table with, with her because I was a little black girl who had to wear a scarf, almost looked like I had cancer, but I didn't have any hair on my head. So I had to wear a scarf. And I believe that was in maybe kindergarten, first grade, somewhere up in there. And, um, and so I did some more talking about um, just, I t and so she, mom said, she said to me, you wouldn't you wouldn't share details of our life to to make money on YouTube, would you? And I said, no. I said, no, I am sharing parts of my life because it's therapy for me. Also, also, I do it because I want to tell my story because it's important. Finding out, Jasmine Way, that I was what you call a sensitive person. I'm a sensitive person. I found that out when I went into trauma therapy. <coughs> Excuse me, y'all. I got a dry throat. I should have brought some water in here. And that part of what my sister don't understand about me, let's, let's get into it. And this might be you on the other side of the phone. Part of what my sister don't understand is that I am sensitive to emotions. I thought at one time, well, maybe I have high functioning autism or maybe it's ADHD. I don't know. I'm not sure. <laughs> when I tell my, me and my clients, we talk and I said, I told one of my clients, she worked at Duke University. She's got a really high end job at Duke. And I said, I said, Kim, you know, 
maybe I, you know, I got the Asperger's or the, you know, or high function autism. She said, Cheryl, I don't know what you have, but it's not that. <laughs> and so we laugh, but you know, ADHD, I don't know what it could be or what it is, but I'm a sensitive person. I'm an intuitive person. I see things. I feel things. When I hear certain tones coming out your mouth, like I read emotions and I can feel your feelings. I've always been that way. But let me get into this. So these are the things that I've learned about myself because I've hurt a lot. And when you have lots of life happening, my sister asked me a question one time. She said, you went through your first divorce with your husband, right? She said to me, she said, other people, and this was years ago. She said, other people didn't go through. I'm, I'm, I'm making a video. Somebody just called me y'all. So other people didn't fall apart like you did. And see, at the time, I didn't have an answer or response to that. Um, it was true, though. I was offended because I was like, well, I'm not other people. That's my obvious thought pattern. Well, I'm not other people. I'm me. You know what I'm saying? We are not the same. But as I went through trauma therapy, I found out why. I found out that I was a people-pleasing, codependent. I certainly am an empath. I'm a highly sensitive person. These are all the things that I found out. So a divorce with the love of my life? And a person that I've been loving and totally emotionally dependent on, not being able to validate myself, having wounds and desperately in need of love, being a child, basically in a narcissistic home, you, when you grow up in a narcissistic home and some of y'all might know this and then others don't in every narcissistic family, there's a golden child. There's also what the, the person that they call a scapegoat. So I would classify as a scapegoat. Because me being the scapegoat is the person who is, who is identified by the narcissistic parent as the truth teller in the family. The golden child is the child that the narcissistic parent chooses to indoctrinate or to put the family the way that the narcissistic parent sees things and the, there's an indoctrination that goes on in a narcissistic family is how that parent see things and do things and they give the golden child that type of identity and the golden child will not be able to ever to come out from underneath that they will live in a shared fantasy with that narcissistic parent the scapegoat is the truth teller the scapegoat is the one that can see the narcissistic parent. The scapegoat also is the one that will be critically abused by the narcissistic fam family parent. The scapegoat also will be exploited, manipulated, and gaslit. The scapegoat will go through all of these different phases. I can, it all resonates with me. I've been there. I've done that. I've done all of these things. My part of my thing being here on YouTube is since it's taken me all my life to figure out this stuff and to find it, see God, the universe, however you want to call it, has been so gracious because when you ask questions, when you take the time, how I T-dog double dare you. To ask certain questions. You might not even have to speak it out loud. You just say it within yourself. And you mean it. I need to know what's going on with me. Why am I. Why am I repeating these patterns. What is this behavior in me. It's almost like. If you know the Bible scriptures and there are certain scriptures that resonate with me and that I still hold dear to because it just makes sense. When Paul the Apostle said in uh, he what did he say? Um, it's almost like in my flesh, in my body, I'll use the word body, there dwells no good thing, meaning that there's a part of me that is bad and I recognize it. That's the patterns and the behaviors. But there also there, there's also a good part of me, a part of me that's really, really good. 
And when I'm trying to do good, then that bad comes out and it keeps holding me down the bad. So nowadays I get that because, you know, I tell y'all, I am not my body. I live in it. I'm not my brain. I have one. I tell y'all about the subconscious mind, how it works. The brain works. It doesn't ask permission. It thinks on its own. Okay. But you have to learn how, how that all works. And so in this narcissistic home that I grew up in, and I talked to mama some about this, not a whole lot, because this is my journey and I'm figuring things out. My sister Jasmine Way may be embarrassed about my pursuit of truth. Truth and justice, basically, you can just pretty much just, you can just put that on me as a, as I, that's just a part of who I am. You only have to put that on me. That's inside of me and it always comes out. Truth and justice is, is important. Living in a shared fantasy and living within a, a, a narcissistic fantasy or indoctrination is not me because see, I see the truth through the lie. I don't do mask and facades. My intuition shows me what's true and what's not. No matter what a person said, and that's not just, but the thing is it is, the thing about it is in the last three years, all of this has been, I've been working on my construct. I'm not worried about you. I'm not worried about the deacon, the pastor. I'm not worried about the apostle. I'm not worried about my husband. I'm not worried about my children. It's me. Y'all be quiet. Excuse me, y'all. I told y'all I'm loud and I got about five grandkids in the house. Jasmine. <laughs> Y'all be quiet. Mm -hmm. It ain't get really loud. So I've been working on myself. My One of my clients called me today and she said, sure, I'm so proud of you that you reached out to your sister. Well, then I said, well, thank you. And because I've been checking into my emotions. And when I talk to her, I ain't pissed off or mad in or any kind of way because I'm proud of me. I'm proud of me too for making the decision not to go to the funeral because it's a it's a horrible thing when you betray yourself. See, since I'm not worried about mask and facades, I don't give a damn what it looked like. I need to be able to be true to myself all the way down in the marrow of my bone. That's important from a person who has been manipulated and gaslit for most of their life. Knowing the truth about a person, knowing situations, but not being able to act upon it, not being able to create boundaries because I didn't fucking trust myself. So when I say that it's a new sheriff in town, Jasmine, <laughs> it's me, but I am sheriffing myself. Or some people call it reparenting. Okay, because I don't have to. Follow any type of indoctrination, whether it be my parents' indoctrination, my husband's indoctrination, or the church's indoctrination, right? I don't have to do anything. So, Cheryl Gabowski is all about freedom and expression, and my sister will be okay. She might be embarrassed about me sharing my story in the way that I look at it because we are sisters, but we're individuals. I found out too with narcissistic people that they have a problem individuating. Did y'all hear that word? Individuating. So technically they are still like, they cling to the parent. They, there's no line of separation between the child and the parent. And I talk about, I talk a lot about church people a lot because Everybody knows that nowadays there are lots of people, church folks, Christians who are preaching about narcissism. The church is full of narcissists from the pulpit to the door. Full. 